Let's think about the rules of spelling. There are many, many rules of spelling and people think that spelling is really, really difficult to learn. And it is, but there are lots and lots of rules um, and strategies that you can use. So let's start out with the basics. So let's think about the basics. A phonogram is sometimes used to describe the sound and then the let the picture that is made. So the phono means sound, gram means picture, and the gram picture there means the letter is the picture. So when you see the letter A, you think of the sound A. When you see, see the letter T, you hit think of the sound T because you see the picture of the letter T. A few basics, there's 26 letters in the alphabet and they can be combined to make 44 different sounds. And those sounds are called phonemes. Again, from that word phono meaning sound. The 44 phonemes can be spelt in many combinations of letters, and those combinations of letters are called graphemes. And there are 75 commonly used graphemes and over 120 in total. So those 26 letter, single letter graphemes, and then there are 49 common multi-level, multi-letter graphemes, such as AI, AY. So that gives us our 75 commonly used graphemes. Just a few technical words. A graph is one letter. Two letters is called a digraph three letters a trigraph and four letters a quad graph just make sure you get the g in the middle it's a bit tricky to say so those 75 common graphemes are used for the building blocks of over 90 percent of english words so we think english doesn't follow the rules but it does there are lots of rules about how it is put together and if we look at the 100 most frequently used words and they make they make up 50 percent of what we read if we get to 300 most common words that's actually 65 percent of what we actually see written down so it really is worth knowing some basic rules and basic strategies for spelling. So let's think about vowels and consonants. So when I ask you what's a vowel, you're probably going to say A, E, I, U, U, and sometimes Y. The vowels are the sounds which are made by your mouth when it's open and it's not blocked by the teeth or the lips or the tongue. So therefore we use them for, for warm up in singing using a, 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 e, I, because you can stretch them out and those sounds can be produced for a long time. And then consonants obviously then are the opposite of that. They're sounds that are made by blocking the sound and they're hard to sing. You can't sing letter T, 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 t doesn't sing. And obviously alone we won't use those for warm ups, but we might learn ta, ta, t, t, um, adding a vowel to them. Interestingly, you can't shout a word if it doesn't have a, a vowel in it. So if you shout help, but without the et sound in it, hoop, hoop, it gets really hard to shout that out. But if you're really needing help and you want to shout out help, put the e back in, help, and now you can shout it really loud. Much easier than hoop, which doesn't shout very well. And one final thing is just to think about syllables in words. So these are the blocks that we build our words with. They're the beats in the word. And when you were a child, you probably counted them out by clapping them like hippopotamus, crocodile, budgeriga. So there's lots of words that you could do that with. Um, every syllable there has to have a vowel in it. That's part of what makes it a vowel. Remember on the previous page, we had help, hoop, isn't a word. Um, and you can find the syllables by either putting your hand under your chin and feeling as it drops down as you say each one. So as you say each syllable, your jaw will drop down as you say the vowel part. Another way is to hum the word. So if you wanted to find how many syllables were in hippopotamus, you could hum it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then you can hear that there's five syllables in that. Watch out for the next part of this starting to explain the different rules.